Welcome to the Fully Alive Poet Society. You've heard of the Dead Poet Society. We'll probably read some poems from poets who have passed. We're not restricted or limited to that. And we like the word life much better than the word death. And so that is why we are the very much alive Poet Society. Tonight we'll start with some reading. And poem and a poet that you all know. Robert Lee Frost needs no introduction and we've all heard this poem. Uh, it's just one of my favorites and so we'll start off with that just to get the vocal cords going. Stopping by the woods on a snowy evening by Robert Lee Frost. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it's queer to stop without a farmhouse near. Between the woods and the frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year, he gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there's some mistake. And the only other sounds, the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. And miles to go before I sleep. Yes, that's a really short poem, but it's a really good poem because Robert Frost said a lot in that poem. And I remember it, probably read it in third grade, but uh, the miles to go before I sleep is, uh, I think he said a whole poem in just those lines. I think he wrote the poem just so he could say, Miles to go before I sleep. You could interpret that along the lines of he's got a long journey and the sound is a bit morose. But I think what he was implying there was miles to go before he sleeps as in the death. And so there's many ways of looking at any poem and that's how I look at that one. And now we will read The Forest Reverie by Edgar Allan Poe. To said that when the hands of men tamed this primeval wood, and hoary trees with groans of woe, like warriors in an unknown foe, when the strength subdued, the burging earth gave instant birth to springs that ne'er did flow, and that in the sun did rivulets run, and all around rare flowers did blow. The wild rose pale perfumed the gale, and the queenly lily adorned the dale, whom the sun and the dew and the winds did woo, with the gourd and the grape luxuriant grew. So when in tears the love of years is wasted like the snow, and the fine fibbles of his life by the rude wrong of an instant strife are broken at a blow, Within the heart do springs upstart, of which it doth now know, and strange sweet dreams like silent streams that flow, new fountains overflow, with the earlier tide of rivers glide, deep in the heart whose hope has died, quenching the fires its ashes hide, its ashes whence will spring and grow sweet flowers ere long, rare and radiant flowers of song. And that was Edgar Allan Poe with his classic poem, The Forest Reverie. I thought it was a very uh, uh, sad sort of poem in a way. I, I, I saw it as a, a poem that was like many of Edgar Allan Poe's uh, works where he seems to have a, 
trying to speak possibly from his own personal experience in his poetry and we all know what kind of life he lived and it seems to simply emanate in almost all his work. So what do you think of that poem uh, or any other poem we've read here on the fully alive poet society? The very much alive poet society. We haven't decided what we're going to call it, but we're not the dead poet society, that's for sure. Because poetry is very much alive here. We love poetry, and we, we like to study it and talk about it, and we like to read a few to get the ball rolling. And hopefully, if you like anything you've heard, uh, uh, leave some comments about what you thought the poem meant. That would be great, because we're doing this together. Uh, also, if you got any poems you'd like me to read, just drop the poem on a comment. Hey, read this. Maybe I will. So that was Edgar Allan Poe, The Reverie. In just a moment, we're going to read another poem. Uh, and it's going to be from an early American style. You're uh, listening to the Very Much Alive Poet Society. And tonight, we're just reading some poems just kind of randomly. I have a few uh, poems I was reading lately, and I wanted to share them with you. This one was Widow Be Dot to Elder Sniffles. Widow Be Dot to Elder Sniffles by Francis Miriam uh, Berry Witcher. This is a sort of a whimsical, comical kind of tone. She was a humorist in her day. And so we'll take a stab at it to see if we can get what she intended here, and I will now begin. Oh, Reverend Sir, I do declare, it drives me to most frenzy to think of you lying there down sick with influenza. A body thought it was enough to mourn your wife's departure without such trouble as this air to come of following order. But sickness and affliction are sent by wise creation. And always ought to be underwent by patience and resignation. Oh, could you bedside fly and wipe your weeping eyes and do my best to cure you up? It wouldn't create surprise. It's a world of trouble we tarry in. The elder don't despair that you may soon be moving again. It's constantly my prayer. Oh, sick and well, you may depend. You'll never be forgot. By your faithful and affectionate friend, Priscilla Poobidot. And that was the whimsical poem. By the widow Bidot to Elder Sniffles. And written by Francis Miriam Berry Witcher. And I thought it was kind of cute. And I just thought I'd share that with you. And just to lighten up the mood just a little bit there. Welcome to the very much alive Poet Society. Our next offering is from James Robinson Plant, born February 27, 1796, and died May 30, 1880. James Robinson Plant was a British dramatist, an antiquary, and officer of arms over a period of approximately 60 years. He wrote, adapted, or collaborated on 176 plays in a wide range of genres, including extravaganza, farce, comedy, burletta, melodrama, and opera. And Plants was responsible for introducing historically accurate costume into 19th century British theater, and subsequently became an acknowledged expert on historical costume, publishing a number of works on the topic. Well, here we go. Whenever I'm presented with a poem I have never seen, I have to really get to know it. And it took me a while to get a handle on this poem by James Robinson Plotch, but I think I kind of get what he's trying to do here. And his introduction gave me some clue that it sounds like he's doing a Broadway kind of thing. So I'm going to give it that sort of look and see, let's see if we get it right. Any of you that know this, this author? I got it wrong. Just let me know in the comments how bad I messed up this poem. But I'm going to give it a shot. And I think I kind of understand how you, this poem's going to go. 
Why, three score and ten by common calculation. The years of a man amount to, but we'll say he turns four score, yet in my estimation, in all those years, he has not lived today. Out of the eighty, you must first remember the hours of the night you must pass asleep in bed. Counting from December to December, just half your life you'll find you've been dead. To forty years at once by this reduction, we come and sure the first five from your birth. While cutting teeth and living upon suction, you're not alive to what this life is worth. From 35 next take for education, 15 at least at college and at school. When notwithstanding all your application, the chances are you may turn out a fool. Still, 20 we have left us to dispose of. But during them your fortune you've to make. And granting with the luck of some one knows of, tis made in 10. That's 10 from life to take. Out of the 10, Yet left you must allow for the time for shaving, tooth, and other aches. Say four, and that leaves six. Too short, I vow, for regretting past and making fresh mistakes. Meanwhile, each hour dispels some fond illusion, until at length, sans eyes, sans teeth, you may have scarcely sense to come to this conclusion. You've reached four score, but haven't lived a day. And so you've listened to some of our poetry tonight on the Very Much Alive Poets Society. Uh, we'd like to share some of our favorite poems that we read during the, the week. We try to get a show published once a week, sometimes more often. Just depends on how fast we can read that poem. And so we were reading some poems, and I sort of got on to some styles that I don't often read, but this one uh, that was more uh, comical and uh, whimsical. Then we had, of course, the Edgar Allan Poe. And so, again, let this me know what you like. If you have a poem that you'd like me to try to read, if you have a poem you'd like to talk about, just write it in the comments, and we'll see if we can take a look at it. We're doing this together. It's the very much alive poet society which implies at least more than one so we can't have a society with just yourself well i guess you could but you might need instagram or something to give a helping hand so the dead poet society is a famous movie and I, I like that so i was playing off that and we're the very much alive poet society our intent is to discuss poetry have a little fun with it we're going to read uh, poems that you may never have heard of, and we'll read poems that you've probably heard too many times. Uh, poetry is very much like music. Most of it's musical. A lot of it's certainly rhymes. But poetry is, uh, I've always been fascinated by it. I was the kind of guy that would write poems instead of watching the, uh, the teacher. Uh, I like poetry. I've written a lot of poems, and... Uh, I don't write them to, to be published. I just write them for people that I want to read. Uh, but I, I just like poetry. And so I hope and assume that you do too. Tonight we discuss three. And we're going to uh, probably stop with that because uh, we have a certain time limit. Uh, but the Very Much Alive Poet Society, if you're new or haven't heard of it, uh, thanks for checking in with us. And We'd like to hear from you. What kind of poems do you like? Uh, certainly would like to uh, discuss poems that our audience is interested in. Thanks for listening to the Very Much Alive Poet Society. I'm Roger, and uh, I gotta go.